We're at culinary stage numero uno. A little cloudy out. Color food and wine. Going in to see a cooking demonstration with Martha Stewart. Super excited. Tony! <laughs> I'm not live right now, but keep your shirt on for now. It's early. <laughs> well, if you put your little finger through, that's fine. All right, we're gonna go see Martha. It was my finger. Are you going by Martha? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm looking at 
Oh, they're still serving. Oh, you're serving the salad before I made it? <laughs> Are we out of time? We must be out of time. Okay, and then whisk all this together. Oh, so good. And then drizzle in, emulsify with some really good olive oil from Mexican olives.
when I see this landscape out here and see the amazing, amazing uh, uh, accomplishments of a, of a company like Kohler, and I'm not being paid to do this, by the way, by Kohler, to tell, talk about Kohler, but what an incredible, incredible success story this company is. So I get to learn, and then I can teach, or then I can apply. That's what I do. Learn every day so you can teach, and learn every day, day so that you can apply your lessons to your life. And, uh, and that's what I try to tell people all the time. Hello. Um, what is your go-to, like, your favorite comfort food? Like, if you're snuggled up on a rainy night, what, what would you order in? Or God, I wonder when that could possibly be. <laughs> Am I just snuggling up anywhere, Kevin? I don't think, I don't think I'm snuggling up anywhere, anytime. Uh, first of all, I do not eat in bed. Rule number one. Do not eat in bed. I tried eating a pomegranate in a white linen bed once. <laughs> that was not a good thing. And I, I got one spot on the bed. Because I, I tried it just to see if I could do it. And pomegranate, as you know, you can't get the stain out, no matter what you try. So that was not so fun. Um, comfort food. Well, I don't drink alone, so I can't count drink as a comfort, <laughs> even though it is comforting. Um, I don't drink, I've never, I, I, I can't remember the last time I, I don't think I, did I ever have a drink at home alone? I don't think so. I just don't drink at home alone. Like a lot of my friends will light a candle and sit down with a glass of wine. I can't do that. Um, so, comfort food. I like like a half of grapefruit, can you imagine? Sitting at the kitchen counter, doing my paperwork, with the dogs all around my feet. That, I have the grapefruits really great. And the pink grapefruit, really thin skinned, heavy pink grapefruit. That's nice. Yeah, my answer, I'm going to this. Oh, I make yogurt now. Oh, I make yogurt every week. Um, and I love that yogurt with homemade pink applesauce. The pink applesauce is from my apples. I, we had a bumper year of apples this year, bumper crop. And I just cook the apples, I core them, leave the skin on, cook them in a tiny, tiny bit of water until they're very soft. No sugar, no sugar at all, or maybe a squeeze of lemon juice. And then I, I, I pick out the skins. If I'm real fussy, I just pick out the skins. But I will put them through the food mill if I'm making a vast amount. And that I eat with the homemade yogurt, which is very good. And um, that is comfort food. I have a question. I'm a Puritan. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, what? You have such a breadth and depth of knowledge and information in so many things. And all of that breadth and depth uh, it is wrapped up and cloaked in cloaked. There's so much history behind every idea. How do you distill the vastness of a really incredible idea into its simplest essence. What? How do you? What is your inspiration to really concentrate that? Well, I'm an archivist. I keep, and I keep. And you talk about vast ideas. I have um, those plastic file boxes. You know, I have about I think 400 of those, chock full of all the ideas and all the calendars from pretty much my whole life. So I know where I can look up where I was, where I was in uh, 1991, if I want to, and I am. I'm writing an autobiography, so that helps. I also have a vast archival uh, photo library, and uh, so I can look at pictures, and they bring back a tremendous amount of memories. Photographing now that now that you know we're, we're in the habit of the, carrying the iPhone, and you get really nice pictures. That really is good. But in the olden days, that was a camera with film that you had to take down to. To gall to have them to have them printed with the negatives. I have so many negatives, but I got all those negatives scanned, so now I know what the pictures are because looking at negatives. So I, that's how I do it. I really I try very very hard to keep really good um, records of everything that I do, and then I can remember better. When you're presenting the ideas and you've archived all this information, and you now have to present it to the public. Right. How do you, you distill the greatness of you all of these? You things? write a book, and you have a tough editor who says this is too long. Sure. <laughs> and you also have recipes. Yeah, you all, I love what you say. It's about like, need and want, right? Yeah. Really, like understanding from consumers, viewers, readers what it is that they're looking for yeah. and they need, and fulfilling that, right? Yeah, that's that's really what I try to do. It's, uh, 
not, not get too much, not get too little, be clear and, and precise and accurate, authentic. Uh, I was wondering, other than Wisconsin, what's the most fascinating place you've been with? <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been to really a lot of places recently. It's a good question. I went to um, on a little boat trip to Iceland and Greenland in early September, I think it was September. And we had such a great time um, visiting uh, very remote places. Greenland is pretty much as remote as you can get. Um, and still be, you know, I mean, right next to Canada, but um, but it's remote and very unpopulated, and very interesting in terms of the natural resources. You learn a lot on a trip like that. Um, I love Iceland. I love it. I love the idea that Iceland is really 100% um, um, sustainable. They they run themselves on thermal energy. Uh, all electricity, all heating, all cooling is run on thermal, and it's so brilliant. And to get to know the people who are behind all that progress is very nice, and I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm able to do that. Um, so um, I like to go to I like to go to uh, exciting uh, places. I went to Madagascar last Christmas with my family, my two grandchildren and my daughter, and uh, it just I wanted to see the lemurs because I've been studying anthropology for a long time, and lemurs are right at the bottom of the human chain of life. And so they were so cute. I saw, I saw all kinds of lemurs. And my daughter wanted to see the baobab trees. And uh, they, they, there are a few of them in, in, in Africa, but um, on Madagascar, they're incredible. It was a very amazing trip. But I think people have to take, take into consideration, you, you think about going to Madagascar, go to Madagascar if you, think, if you thought about it. And um, Antarctica, you know, I've been there. I've been, I've been, my grandchildren, they're only 11 and 12, they've been to 12, um, seven different continents. And they count their they count their their visits in continents. Now they, they want to go here, or there, but they haven't had enough visits to continent number four. I took them to Tasmania. I always wanted to go to Tasmania. I wanted to buy a farm there, and then I go down there, and it's really far from New York, Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go for a weekend to Tasmania. It takes a couple days to get there. So um, that's that's what it's like. Uh, my name's Brian. I'm from uh, Stillwater, Minnesota. I am a decent home cook, but I find some um, Eastern Asian Indian foods are very difficult for me to cook because those aren't flavors or techniques that I grew up with. Um, what's a good way to learn to expand my culinary horizons and my cooking skills? To visit, go there. Go where your tastes kind of take you. Uh, I, love, I love Thai food, so I went to Thailand, and I've had also the the authors of that fantastic uh, salty, sweet, sweet, sweet sour, sweet sour, salty, salt, no, sweet. What's the name of the book? Sweet sour salty, <coughs> bitter, right? Yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey I mean, it's so fantastic. And you have to do that. You have to search for the best book. The, go to the country of origin. Go to, find the best books, the best recipes. Um, meet some people who really know how to cook. Indian food is like that, of course. Um, we're going to India on Wednesday. I'm going to find me. I've never been to Mumbai. I call it, ba I still call it Bombay. But um, I cannot wait to, to eat the food I'm going to be eating when I'm there. And, uh, and, and I have, I've made all kinds of delicious Indian food at my home, but I know it's going to be so much better in, in Mumbai. Immediately. Oh, the reason I hired Thomas in the first place was he had just written a master's thesis on pho. Yes, pho. And uh, it is so good. And I have a friend now, too, Monica, who cooks pho every two weeks. She does either a chicken or a beef. And, uh, and I, get a, I get a couple half gallons of it. And that, I just drink that. That's so delicious. With that star anise in it, that very oh, so so delicious. Do you get a jar of it too? No, I call no. her up. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, so I do that. That's the best way. Well, thank you all so much for coming and enjoy the rest of the festival. I is it? I don't think it's raining. It's been threatening, but it's nothing like the East Coast. I left in a downpour. And, this was the seventh weekend in a row where it has rained out every wedding, every bar mitzvah, every everything, you know. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, pretty miserable. So have fun. Thank you. Yeah.
So it's fun. I never thought about using the water from your pasta to put in there. I would like probably fill it with butter, but what she made was really good. Especially with the caviar. Caviar is not necessary, but it was tasty. And the kale salad was delicious. I'm going to try to find those recipes and I'll post them on here for you. I'll link it so you guys can see that. But yeah, Martha's, uh, she's doing great. 82 years old. Absolutely destroying it. So that was fun. Let me know what you think of it, of the entire experience. I tried to film as good as I could. It was just hard. There's some big heads in front of me. Not as big as mine, but thanks for watching.